Welcome back everybody. In today's episode of Cooking with Kirby, we're gonna be making birria tacos. Now to start off with our ingredients, we're gonna need some chuck roast. You can use different cuts of uh, beef. Just make sure that it has enough fat content in there. Beef shank is another good one. Uh, you do kind of want that, you know, fatty material in there because that's where the flavor is going to come from. So I got about two and a half pounds of chuck roast. And then I also have about almost two pounds of beef short ribs. Now this is going to add the flavor. I want the flavor from the bone getting in there. So that's going to add some really good flavor into this because we're going to be using these tacos to dip in the consomme. So that's what we're focused on is, you know, getting that consomme. The, the broth, really, really flavorful. For this amount, you're gonna need about six chili pods of either Guajillo or California. Now, Guajillo and California chili pods are not spicy. You can find these online. There's many different brands. El Wapo, there's uh, uh, Mexicano, there's uh, Fiesta, Fiesta. I use a lot of Fiesta brand um, uh, spices and, and these are actually from Fiesta. But whatever chili pods you can get your hands on to, you wanna make sure it's it's a, not a spicy chili pod. These are gonna add some really good color and it's gonna add some really, really good flavor. Now, this chili pod on the other hand, this is a New Mexico chili pod. This one's spicy, this one brings the heat. You need to be really careful on, on knowing which one's which because if you put six of these, that thing's gonna be hot. Uh, but we're gonna be adding in one today and we're also gonna be taking out the seeds. The seeds actually do add the spice. You're gonna need two bay leaves. These are small, so I just went ahead and just threw them all together, but two bay leaves is what you're gonna need. Now, this recipe actually came from my aunt, so this is how she does it. We're gonna be adding in a stick of cinnamon. You're gonna need three Roma tomatoes. You're gonna need half of an onion. You're gonna need at least two garlic cloves, but this is I like my stuff pungent with garlic, and I'm not gonna actually cook these. I'm gonna actually throw this in the salsa and then just throw it in there. Uh, I want that, that spicy garlic flavor, so, but two garlic cloves is all you need really for this, but just personal preference, I like that little extra garlic kick. A tablespoon and a half of dried oregano, two teaspoons of ground cumin, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of beef bouillon. You could substitute this with beef broth if you'd like, but I really love the, the flavor from the bouillons. I use chicken bouillon a lot, and beef bouillon is another thing. Um, and then finally, we're gonna need a quarter cup of white distilled vinegar. So we have all our chili pods in a pot. And we're gonna go ahead and just fill this up with a little bit of water just to cover them. And about that's all we need. All right, so we're gonna turn this on. We're gonna bring this to a boil. And we're gonna let them boil for about 15 to 20 minutes. So after about 15 minutes of boiling, these look like they're ready. They're nice and soft. These wajillos were already kind of soft already. They don't always come super dry, but yeah, this is what you want. You just want it pliable. So we're gonna go ahead and get this in the blender. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our chili pods and place them in a blender. Now do not discard this juice. We're actually gonna use some of it to blend everything. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in our onion, our tomatoes, our bay leaves, garlic, add in the oregano, cumin, the beef bouillon, brown sugar, our distilled vinegar, now, as you can see, I added everything but the cinnamon stick. We're not gonna be putting that in this. We're gonna be putting this in the Instant Pot and we're gonna be removing it once we're done. And we're gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of that juice from the chili pods that we cooked up. About a cup or so. Just want enough li liquid in there just to blend everything together. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pulse this for a little bit, then we're gonna puree it really, really good. All right, now that we pulsed it and got everything kind of like mixed together and kind of chopped up, now we're gonna go ahead and hit it to puree. And we're gonna let that go for about two minutes or so. All right, that looks about right. Let's go ahead and give it a taste, see how this thing comes out. So, this is the first time me actually trying birria like that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and give this a taste. This is gonna be the first time me actually trying this type of birria. This came from my aunt. I'm not gonna lie, that has some really, really good flavor. That sweetness from the brown sugar really makes it pop. So, let's go ahead and get this over to our Instant Pot. All right, now that we have our Instant Pot here, we're gonna go ahead and add in our chuck rolls. Now, I did cut these in little chunks, probably about like two and a half inches uh, chunks. I'm gonna help it cook a little bit faster. 
and I kind of want to get these on the bottom. So I think I'm gonna move the some of the chuck roast around. That way I could get the beef ribs in there on the bottom. I really want the, that bone flavor to get really seep into this uh, consomme. There we have it. So the last one, we'll put it on the bottom here, and then we'll just go ahead and top it with the chunks. All right. We'll go ahead and add in the cinnamon stick. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and pour in our salsa marinade. This stuff is very, very flavorful. Thank you, Tia, for this recipe. It's really, really good. I can't wait to see how these tacos come out. Let's go ahead and give it a mix. You wanna make sure everything's covered in that marinade. Now, don't worry about salt at this moment because at the end is when we're gonna season. This is what I use my Instant Pot for. Just take a lot of meat, put it in here, and you know, just let it do its thing, and then I do whatever I'm gonna do with that meat later. Like I do pork roast all the time, and I'll make like little, little tacos with that, or sandwiches. Um, but for the most part, this is what I use my Instant Pot for. So let's go ahead and close this up. Now we are pressure uh, cooking this, so you wanna make sure that it's sealed. In this position right here, it's venting. You wanna make sure that your Instant Pot is sealed. So we have that sealed. So for the timing of cooking any roast is about 25 to 30 minutes per pound. So we got roughly a little over four pounds here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit pressure cook. You wanna make sure that it's selected on more, more pressure, more, more heat, because that's gonna cook a little bit hotter. But if, if you're stuck here on normal, just go ahead and press the button again. And it'll select it to four. We're gonna increase the time. I'm gonna say about two hours. So we roughly have about four pounds of, of meat in there. I think two hours is gonna be enough time. So um, we're gonna just let it do its thing. So how the Instant Pot works in the pressure mode, it says on, but it's not pressurized right now. So what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna take about 20 minutes or so to pressurize. And then once it's actually fully pressured, then it'll start the timer. So once you see the timer going, then that's, it's actually pressurized and cooking. So we're gonna just let it do its thing and we'll come back when it's time to make those tacos. All right, so our timer's done. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna cancel this. And we're gonna let this naturally release. It takes about 20 minutes or so. But once you see the little button on the top go down, you're ready to go. So I'm gonna let it naturally release and I'll get back to you then. Now that it's fully naturally released, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Woo, that smells good. All right, let's get some uh, tongs and pull out this meat. First, we're gonna take out the cinnamon stick. Go ahead and put that to the side. We don't need that in there no more. Just super tender. That looks nice. Smells good. So we'll go ahead and get all this out and we'll shred it up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and strain this broth. As you see, you see all the, the fat content right there on the top. And just go ahead and run this through our screen. You wanna take out all the particles or most of the particles anyways, because this is gonna be like our dip. Just run your spoon through, and just let it go through. We're gonna be clearing some of this stuff out. This right here has a lot of flavor, do not get rid of this. So this is the last bit of that puree that I'm, um, I'm screening out. I'm gonna go ahead and put this actually in the meat. Uh, it, I did taste it, it does need a little bit more seasoning as far as salt wise. So at this point, we're, we're basically gonna season the broth and the meat to taste. Now, I'm gonna just finish this off and then we're gonna shred our meat. So for the consomme, we're just gonna hit with a little bit of salt. Now, season to taste. This is real rich. There's a lot of that flavor from the fat in there and then everything that we put in there, this is gonna be really good. So let's go ahead and get to our meat. All right, so once you get everything all shredded up, Make sure that you actually take out the membrane on the back of the beef ribs, this stuff right here. This isn't gonna chew good. So yeah, make sure you, there, there was three of those in there, so make sure you take that out. Now the puree that we removed from the, the broth, we're gonna actually put that in here. And it does need some seasoning. So at this point, you're just gonna season to taste. I'm gonna start off with just a couple pinches of salt. And 
just mix this all together. I have a feeling putting that puree back in the meat is gonna make it just wonderful. And I'll add some extra juice to it. Yeah, it's already looking really, really good. I mean, look at that. Okay, go ahead and check for seasoning. Like I said, at this point, it's just your preference. If it needs more salt, go ahead and add more salt. All right, I think that's gonna final it off. All right, let's go ahead and taste it. Perfect. So we're gonna start off by heating up our tortilla and we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of oil down in this pan. We're gonna get these tacos nice and crispy. Now I got this about medium heat. You want the oil to be about 325 degrees. Okay, so we got our tortilla all heated up. Now we're gonna go ahead and lay down some of this shredded beef. This has a wonderful flavor, y'all. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of pico de gallo. All this is is just onion, tomato, and cilantro. You don't have to add it if you don't like all the green stuff, but uh, I don't mind it. And then we're gonna add some cheese right there. I'm just gonna fold this up, give it a smash. Now let's get to our pan. All right, so we got our oil all hot. Go ahead and lay it down. Let that cheese melt, let that, that tortilla crisp up really quick. After about 30 seconds or so, we're gonna go ahead and flip it. Go ahead and let it go for another 30 seconds or so, or just about the crispiness you want. This is nice and crispy. All right, after that 30 seconds, go ahead and remove. And I'm gonna put this on a tray with a grate on there so that way the oil can drip. All right, y'all, so I got my consomme tacos and some salsa and some lime. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this salsa rojo and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in that consomme just to add a little bit of kick. Uh, that's all I really want it for. It has most of the ingredients that are pretty much in this uh, consomme. And we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of lime to it. I never thought I'd see the day that I'm gonna be drinking a taco. Cheers, y'all. Just get all that consomme in there. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. That is messy. <laughs> but the flavors are so intense. I mean that that broth is just. Mmm. That juice is just so much flavor in there. It's just so much flavor. Really, really good. I can't stop eating this. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. Man. These tacos are so good. That broth is on point. There's so much flavor packed into that console. Man, you guys really gotta try this recipe. If you're new to my channel, consider hitting the subscribe button that we can see future videos just like this. As always, I'll leave the link in the video description and in the comment section so that way you can go to my website, cookingwithkirby.com to get the full printable recipe. I have these recipes, they're really good. You should try them out. Now y'all be beautiful and take care.